All right, so I'm going to give you some really good advice here. Let's just say you've just opened up your device that you're looking to repair. You're new at this, okay? You don't know what to look for. These are the things you want to look for as a beginner, intermediate, or advanced electronic repair technician. First thing you want to look for, capacitors, okay? It's the most number one thing that fails in electronic devices. They'll bloat, they'll explode, they'll leak. Look for those signs, okay? Sometimes they will not be obvious, and those are going to be the tricky ones that's going to take a little bit of skill to find, okay? That's where you're going to actually have to troubleshoot the circuit and find out where and what is the problem. So capacitors, number one. Two is power supplies and components and power supplies, power, power parts, okay? Anything where heat is generated, okay, that is where you're going to want to look for, okay? So look for capacitors in the power supply because sometimes power components will generate a lot of heat in their next to capacitors and will prematurely fail the capacitor, okay? So look for that. Uh, number three is burnt or discolored circuit board areas, okay? Look for that. You're going to flip the board over, you're going to see where all the solder connections are, and look for discoloration. Flip the board back over where the parts are, and look at the circuit board and see if there's any discoloration on the circuit board, okay? So that's number three. Um, let's see, what else? You're definitely going to want to look for anything that is... Uh, smoked like resistors if they, they have like a, a discoloration on them or if the color band is almost unreadable uh, that is going to be uh, that is going to be a, a signify that the resistor is overheating or something in the circuit is causing that resistor to heat past its value um, its its current rating okay so you're going to want to check that let's see what else um, bad solder connections number four all right these cheap circuit boards coming out of china were notorious for bad solder connections so you're going to want to flip the board over again get a magnifying glass or a microscope or if you have one or anything a microscope i mean um, a magnifying glass or a good set of uh an eye loop look for cracked solder joints they're notorious especially around the heat components all right so if you have like transistors or anything like that Anything where heat is generated, you're going to find possibly cracked solder joints. So if you see discoloration on the board, you're gonna, you might see a solder connection that is cracked or burnt. Um, and that could go for anywhere on the board also where heat is not an issue because just of a bad manufacturing of the uh, solder wave machine, uh, you know, it didn't get a good adhesion to the, the solder connection. So... Look around for that stuff because sometimes, you know, these boards are so cheap and flimsy. They're just a little bit of flexing from heating and cooling so many times from turning off and on and, you know, um, you know, a thousand times over a couple of years from, you know, you just powering it up and off. That flex can actually crack the solder joints. So, well, that flex of the heat generated, you know, from heating and cooling will crack the solder joints. So, so yeah, it could be... There could be a broken solder joint anyway, and you'll drive yourself nuts trying to troubleshoot a board that looks beautiful. There's no signs of overheating. There's no signs of anything exploded. No capacitors that are bloated. No capacitors that exploded. No nothing. And all it comes down to is one solder joint at like the power input. You know, or the power supply capacitor or a transistor. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. That's how simple that a simple solder joint could actually just cause the whole device to malfunction. And I try to relay that to a lot of people and they just don't understand what's a crack solder joint. A crack solder joint is when the solder joint actually separates from the joint. It will actually kind of look like a ring around the where the pin comes out if it's a through hole component this is going to be mostly common with through hole component components um you'll actually see a ring around the solder joint all right check for those sometimes you'll see rings but they're still connected that may be okay you're going to have to actually say like i said if you if if, if you're in doubt resolder it that's that's just 
point blank just if you're in doubt resolder it but you might see little rings around the solder joints and that is going to be common also but if you actually see a crack in the solder itself resolder it so i mean um you can go as extreme as depending how big the board is i mean if it's something like this small and it's just got about you know a dozen solder connections on it just resolder the whole board it's not going to hurt it may, it may cost you 10, 20 minutes worth of your time, but it, it sometimes works. It sometimes will bring things back to life. And sometimes just the heat alone will actually, from soldering, will actually revive the board because you have a bad capacitor. The heat will actually soak into the capacitor and revive the board temporarily. And then all of a sudden, like, an, like 10 minutes later, it will stop functioning again. That will indicate that you need to start looking for a bad capacitor, okay? So um, if you heat a component, and it actually starts to work again. Oh, if you heat a capacitor and it starts working again, definitely change that capacitor. Uh, that is just that's that's one good sign right there. So uh, I hope that helps with general first time troubleshooting tips for you guys. So um, uh, that's it. So uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.